Hello everyone, we're going to talk about the properties of radicals. The first property is the product property. And this property says that the root of a product, like this one, a times b, any root, that's why I write n, that means any root, the square root, the cube root, the fourth root, n can become any number. It says that the root of a product is the same exact thing as the products of the root. In other words, if I have a product inside of a radical like this one, I can separate that product into its own separate radicals. This only works if it's a product, if I'm multiplying. Please do not make this mistake. This is not equivalent. The nth root of a plus b is not equal to the nth root of a plus the nth root of b. This is not true, okay? So don't confuse the product property. I see this a lot. Students will do the same thing. They will separate the factors when there's a plus sign inside of the radical and we cannot do that. It is not equivalent, okay? So let me give you an example of how the product property works. For example, if I have the square root of 2 times 5, the product property tells me that I can separate those factors into their own radical. I can write it as a product of roots, okay? so square root of 2 times the square root of 5. This is equivalent. It also allows me to go backwards. If I have the square root of 3 times the square root of 5, the product property allows me to join those two factors inside the same radical. Okay, so here I have the root of a product is equal to the product of the roots. And here I have product of two roots equals to the root of a product. So this is equivalent. My second property is the quotient property and it is very similar to that first property. Let me go back here one moment. When I say n at the beginning it means I could have square roots. I can even use it on cubed roots. So if I have the cube root of 8 times 2, I can also rewrite it in its separate cube root, okay? And it works backwards also, okay? So any root, that's what that n means. The quotient property is very similar to the product property. The quotient property says if I have the root, any root, of a quotient, which means a fraction, it is equivalent to having the quotient of the roots. So that means I can separate the numerator from the denominator and place it inside its own radical. Okay? Let's give you an example. If I have the nth root of two-thirds, I can separate these two into their own radical. Square root of 2, the nth root, not the square root, I'm sorry, and the nth root of 3, okay? If I have the square root of 5 over the square root of 6, I can also work this property backwards. If they're separate like this, I have a quotient of roots, I can join them and have a root of quotients, okay? 5 over 6. And my third property is called the power property. That means if I have the root, any root, the nth root of a power, that means I have an exponent, a to the b power. It is equivalent to having a power of a root. So this is equivalent to having the nth root of a, everything raised, to the b power. Example, 
if I have the square root of 5 squared, this is equivalent to having the square root of 5 squared. They are equivalent. And we can demonstrate that this becomes the square root of 25, which in turn becomes 5. This here becomes square root of 5 times square root of 5, which is equal using the product property. I can join these two radicals into one radical, 5 times 5, which in turn becomes the square root of 25, which is 5. So that's why they're equivalent. In our next video, we're going to see some examples on how to use these properties. I'll see you then.